Well, futures, well, they are sinking on the heels of that hotter-than-expected CPI print. The move lower coming as investors adjust and recalculate their expectations for Fed rate cuts. Now, the move lower today, it's coming on the heels what the market has really posted as a strong start to the year, continuing some of the gains that we saw last year. You got the S&P at least year-to-date up just about 9% ahead of today's open. Despite the uncertainty surrounding the Fed and rate cut outlook, our next guest saying that he thinks that the S&P 500 has more room to run. He has the highest year-end S&P target on the street. We want to bring in Chris Harvey joining us here on set. Wells Fargo, head of equity strategy. It's great to have you on set, especially on a day like today. So before we dive into your year-end target, just your quick reaction to this print and what this means for equities, at least in the near term. So obviously it's a pretty ugly reaction, but here's a takeaway. If you look at futures, what's down the most? Small caps are down the most. Right? And for us, this is, this is kind of a perverse statement. We actually want the Fed to go slower because if the Fed goes slower, that keeps the status quo in place. The market is a momentum growth large cap market. It wants the status quo and we can work higher from here. We never thought the Fed was going to go in the first half. But the big and, and the important thing is that the Fed's going to start a multi-year easing cycle. We can argue about when and how much and so on and so forth, but it's the fact that it's a multi-year easing cycle. If you go back to 21 and 22, 21 was a great year. We had a lot of accommodation, actually too much accommodation, but it ran into a buzz on in 22 because the Fed got very aggressive. You're not gonna see that in the future, and I think that's the key takeaway. What's the multi-year easing cycle playbook then? I mean, as of right now, sure, there's the, the pause, I guess, we can consider, but then there's gotta be a pivot and portfolios have to adjust as well in tandem. Yeah, for, for now, what we're saying is it's a growth market. We think it's gonna to continue to be a growth market. This whole belief that, there, that growth is suddenly going to explode, not true. The economy is better than expected, but it's not very strong. So I think what you want to do going forward is you want to have a balanced approach. You want to have some growth in it. On a sector basis, we're telling people to be overweight the communication space. But you want to barbell that or you balance that with something defensive, either healthcare or utilities, for days like today. So the print like this, that doesn't change your base case at all or the fact that you no. still believe, at least in the second half of the year, that we will see a further move to the upside? No, it, it doesn't. Yeah. And we've been expecting volatility. We've been surprised that, that it's been so placid. And we thought you'd get some volatility in the first half of the year. We haven't gotten it yet. Maybe this is it. Maybe rates go a little bit higher. It, put, it upsets the market. But that's fine for us because we think the status quo is here. AI, that secular trade is here. The Fed is going to be cutting for a long period of time. And we may see an acceleration in M&A activity related to some of the regulation change with the election. All this considered, we're staring down a fresh earnings season at this juncture too. What do you think the theme is that prevails this earnings season off of prints like this and with what you were saying about the resilience right. but not super strong nature or at least profile right now of the economy? Yeah, I don't think you want to go out too far and I don't think CEOs are going to be too aggressive. But they'll say, hey, we have opportunities. Hey, pricing is still okay. The economy is still okay. They'll give you some risk. They'll give you some rewards, but it won't be anything, it, you don't get paid to get too aggressive at this juncture. So I think the results will be fine. I think they will be good. If we do have a sell-off, I think that will help, help firm the sell-off or help improve things, but don't expect um, fireworks at this point in time. Chris, one of the risks that you brought up uh, in your most recent note was elevated yields and yep. not exactly at the levels that you were talking about within the note, but we are seeing this huge move to the upside in yields today. You got the 10-year yield above four or five. What kind of pressure then does that ultimately put on markets? I mean, you're talking about that level that you are looking at as a potential risk. What is that level and why? So I think you have to bring rates to 5%. You have yeah. to keep them there for a long period of time. Right? And, and what we've seen in this market is it's a momentum market, not just in equities, but also in rates. Right? And so when rates start to back up, they can gap higher. And, that, and that's a concern, but they have to stay there. And we just don't see enough for it to stay there. Right? Inflation ultimately is coming down. The more time you add, the more it will, will come down. 2%, I think, is aspirational. But it's hard to see that you know, people are talking about 8% on the 10-year. I, I think that's just kind of silly talk. 5%, I think, is a high. I don't think if we do get there, I don't think you stay there. And I think we come back down because inflation is coming down. It's still a low growth environment. But what it does is causes some volatility. You mentioned healthcare a moment ago. Is healthcare your, your top sector right now? What is that um, top sector picture? So the, the top sector is communication. What we're using healthcare or utilities is a it's a barbell, right? We're going to get some volatility. We're going to get some stress in the marketplace. You want some something to balance out that portfolio. And healthcare's healthcare's there. It's good valuation. It's been beaten down. And, and in times of stress, it generally works pretty well. 
Chris, going back to what you said just a moment ago, when you're talking about some of the factors that could drive that upward momentum in the second half of the year, you mentioned increased M&A activity on the heels of the election. What more specifically are you looking for there? And then in terms of the activity, if we do see a change, what that could look like? So what we're looking for is we're looking for a change in the Senate. If the GOP takes the Senate, and it looks like it's better than a coin toss that they will, a lot of regulation, regulation. it's not so much that regulation comes, around, comes out of there, but the GOP is more market focused, um, it's less regulatory, and so you would expect a lot more activity on M&A if you get a GOP that, that controls the Senate, unlike what we're seeing today. Chris Harvey, Wells Fargo Head of Equity Strategy, joining us here in studio. Chris, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. Absolutely.